Security Grant. Um, we haven't been aware of it, but the application was submitted. Um, uh, I, just because we had had some problems in reporting in the past, um, we corrected all our problems there, and I'm proud to say, as of today, we're we've submitted all of our uh, crime statistics all the way back to 2010, um, which is as far back as they would take it, um, and we have those all submitted. So that was one of the reasons why we didn't get the grant last year. Um, and then I had a professional grant writer actually write the grant for us. Um, so that was uh, a little bit of an expense, um, but it was it was something that you know. Talking about a half a million dollar grant there, probably. Um, so, start from the top. We got two new patrol vehicles outside of um, there are four SUVs. Um, I, I was telling them I'll, I'll leave it open, vehicles open for you guys if you want to go outside and take a look at them. In the police garage, I don't know if you've seen the DARE vehicle yet. Um, that was, we, we did a drug investigation um, and we confiscated this gentleman's vehicle. He forfeited, subsequently forfeited the vehicle to us. Um, Captain Wheeler went ahead and uh, contacted the Dare people, and they allowed us to, their copyright for the for the Dare emblems on it. Um, and so now we have a Dare vehicle uh, for the city of East Cleveland. Uh, bicycle patrols. I think you've probably seen them out there. Mm -hmm. uh, working from seven to nine, and from in the morning going to the elementary school, and from two in the afternoon till four. Um, and that's all <coughs> grant funded. Um, that's all, all, all funded by a grant. Um, and I have a, the, we were awarded a grant for a prescription drug, drug box. Um, so unused prescriptions and stuff like that, people can, can deposit those safely now in, in that box. And we're just, we're just in the final stages of um, uh, approving our policy for uh, how we'll dispose of those things. Where would you put to drop the drug box? It's going to be right down in the um, area. Yeah, right, right as soon as you come through the vestibule area, right in front of the police department. Okay. Yeah, and we're working on um, getting a, a large screen TV there too. And we'll, you know, it will have some things to do with the drop or with the prescription drug box there. But it'll also, um, we're going to put on some of our fugitives, um, okay. wanted posters of our fugitives right there. So, um, you know, for the people who commit some of the more heinous crimes uh, that we're looking for because, as we know, it's a small community and, um, you know, if we can get somebody to give us some information on where some of these people are, it would be, be helpful with some of our investigations. Um, not being deviated, but going back, you said you have six patrol officers on bikes. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was the most that we've had. Uh, at one morning, uh, I believe it was last Thursday, there were six on bikes. We're averaging about three. Uh, three at a time. Does that affect the, the amount of officers that's in control on the car? No, this is strictly an overtime detail. Okay. Yeah, that, that's funded uh, strictly as an overtime detail and it's compensated back to the city strictly as an overtime detail. And that's through um, uh, Safe, Safe Ross the School. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and we have our expert on uh, the Powell Youth Development Plan. Why don't you tell them about, about So in um, tandem with the overall youth development plan and our MICOM um, partnership with the Cleveland Foundation, uh, East Cleveland PAL serves as our mentoring and leadership arm of that. And so with those young people, um, we work to mentor them and also expose them to unique experiences outside of the city. Um, some of the types of programs and activities that have been included that we've taken. Last year we took 40 young people camping at Punderson um, and they really enjoyed that. We've taken them to Kosai and Columbus on a bus trip. Um, we've done you know, some of the things young people like skating and bowling and so that will continue as well and that's also grant funded through National Path. Any questions for you? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Thank you. It, it sounds good to me. Uh, I'm glad and pleased you're good to me. And uh, keep up your work. If there's anything the council can do, I can do, let me know. All right. Uh, anything from the fire? No, they can send them the email. We got
got one email back from Chief Wilcox. They were supposed to send somebody in the I got one last question, Mr. Chairman, if I can, to Mr. Right. Cardelli. Over the last few years, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, warrants mm -hmm. and trying to get some of that money that's owed to the city. Are we doing anything in that area because we need money? You know, oh. warrants right, that, right now, just due to staffing, uh -huh. um, we, we do not have a warrant detail. Um, uh, and the majority of the warrants that, um, in conversation I've had with Judge Dawson, the majority of the warrants are actually um, traffic warrants. Okay, and so what what he's been doing now is a program that, that, that the state allows them to do is basically um, uh, suspend somebody's driver's license. And so when they go to renew their license or whatever, they're finding out, hey, you know, you're, you still have all this money to East Cleveland, so it's coming in. Um, we do have the traffic enforcement program, and um, I'm sure that the council has been privy to the information that's been provided uh, from the courts. Um, you know, in the first, let's say, three months of this year, you know, we were bringing forty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, you know, through the courts, and last month it was oh, over one hundred and two thousand um, dollars. So, and basically that was just through a, a strategic deployment of basically two police officers. That work um, a 12-hour shift, um, just opposite of each other, and their primary function is the traffic enforcement. And you know, it's 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 definitely reduced the number of car accidents that we've had. You know, those dangerous and driving, uh, distracted driving habits, mm -hmm. and the byproduct of that is financial gain for the city. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Before you go, Cardell, maybe I should talk to Wheeler about this, but I wanted to call you the other day. I was two or three times coming down Euclid through the Four Seal Shopping Center mm -hmm. and coming out of Nemo's, mm -hmm. they bottlenecked that traffic terribly. I mean, traffic was just at a standstill because people are refusing to yield and people are refusing to go right. I mean, this lady in a, in a big F-150, she about ran into a car just so she could make that left. And when you come out of Nemo's, there's really nowhere to make a left because the light is right here. So there's always one or two cars, so you really can't come out comfortably. What would you do, or how would you go about making it a, a one-way only coming out of here? And the same thing with McDonald's because McDonald's creates a traffic jam as well. And I think if you made those one way, right turn, right turn only, it would serve two purposes. That would be something okay. that council would absolutely do by, you know, just passing an, you know, an ordinance, I'm sure. It would decongest the traffic and it would bring in revenue. And, and also, you know, in that, in that area the other day, I was down there um, and I haven't had a chance to sit down with the chief of staff yet, but actually he was with me and we were talking about it, but we got to figure out some kind of solution because the light there at Euclid Force Hill Boulevard, if anybody's been down through there, I don't know whether it's malfunctioning or what it is, but you can sit there for 10 minutes it's sometimes. A long, it is a long time. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, in fact, I've even sent instructions to the police department to avoid that area, mm -hmm. you know, as far as, you know, I mean, do your routine patrol there, but if you're running code, you know, go find an alternative route because it's, it gets that congested. Do you, you think there's any opportunity as far as the light situation on you could get any assistance from the state since you could do the state route on correct? Correct. Um, I don't know. I, I, I could take a look at that. I'm, I'm not positive. Um, but I, I'd be willing to take a look at that for you. It's good. Or talk to me about it. I mean, you can help along the way. And I don't know if anybody's seen them, but you know, the state highway patrols also um, out here several days a week, too. Um, and they're concentrating on Euclid Avenue. Oh, no. um, yeah. um, they've been here for probably four weeks. Four Hayden weeks. and Shaw area also. Hayden and Shaw, they, 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 every week um, we give them an area to target for those uh, you know, distracted driving habits that, 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 um, you know, that are causing accidents, texting and driving, you know, as well, as, well as, you know, as everyone knows. Um, they're the foremost experts at um, crash investigation, so if they're happen to be here during a time when we have an accident, we, we, we can call on them and, and they're there to help us. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
The health department went out to. Um, you say health department, in Tyler County? Yes, thank you for that. Okay. They went out to uh, be in a barbecue. Okay. Up on Noble. Up on Noble. Mm -hmm. And I went up there afterwards. It looks like a totally different place. Wow. It is so clean in there, it's unbelievable. Uh, and they also went to Coney. And the Plaza. And the Plaza. And uh, I haven't been there, but before I came back, they did a significant, significant job to clean that up as well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad. Yes, I, I, I forgot to mention one thing. Also, uh, we had our state jail inspection uh, this morning. Um, in fact, I just, that's the gentleman you saw me talking to outside the councilman. Uh, we were had the, with the red shirt on. Mm -hmm. That's the state correct uh, jail uh, um, inspector. Um, and all the money that we put into the jail by cleaning, sanitizing, painting, replacing the back windows, uh, cell locks, and everything. Um, we passed everything um, for the first time in I can't tell you how many years. Um, we also passed the health inspection uh, last month uh, by the Board, County Board of Health. And um, the only thing with, that we're going to take a deficiency on is we don't have a day room, but that's something that the facility doesn't have due to being 100 years old. And um, even though we've re repaired and replaced all the lighting inside, it's we just don't have the funding to be able to make it to their standard, which is so many, I forget how he said it was, but but there are lights in there, and, and he said he was going to mention the fact that it's still a little deficient there, but, but that's, so he gave us some really good news and a really positive review. And once again, the funds that was used to clean up the jails were not in the general fund. Were... No, the, all the funds that were used to, to purchase the police cars, the funds that were used to do the jail, the funds that were used for the dare vehicle, um, and basically all the upkeep and maintenance and all of the, our, our entire fleet has all came from our local drug dealers, um, uh, courtesy of the forfeiture program. Great, great, great. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jack. And for all the work you guys do. Um, since fire's not here yet, uh, any remarks from the public? No, at this time? All right. Any council want to make a closing statement? And then who I mean? Well, I just want to say to uh, Mr. Cardelli that what I've heard here is very encouraging, very positive. I don't think we passed a jail inspection in 20 years. So you keep up the good work, sir. Thank you. Before we continue. Someone else coming in now from the fire department. Can you step the mic, please? How are you, sir? Good uh, you can give us a brief of what's going on in the fire department, how things are looking, what's being doing to improve. Can the record reflect that uh, Deputy Chief uh, Jeff uh, Walt is there? Uh, How are you? Uh, as, of <coughs> as of today, we're putting in requisitions uh, to get squad 141 and line number one. 21 fix. Uh, this past two weeks we've had engine 112 and engine 111 fixed. Uh, the issues and problems that they had were fixed by our mechanic and outside mechanic for Ohio Cat. Uh, next month we're going to start working on the FEMA grants, which will be opened up in the, uh, either late October or early November. We have two firefighters that have previous experience uh, with filling out these grants, and we're going to apply for everything. Okay. okay. So as of right now, that's where we have within the fire department. Our ladder truck is still out of service, uh, so we do. <coughs> if we get a ladder truck for any type of emergency situation, we will call for mutual aid, which will usually come from Cleveland Heights, South Euclid, or the city of Cleveland. So as of right now, we're down one squad and one ladder truck. But we do have two engines that are in service. Any community efforts going on? Uh, not even right now. We just finished our inspections of the, uh, this past summer. We'll probably start our fall hydrant inspection service, which we inspect all hydrants throughout the city. As of right now, the chief has not come down with a, a date for that. For the last month or so, we've been trying to catch up on the maintenance of these apparatus. How many people in the department now? Right now, it should be 42. 42. Mm -hmm. We're expecting.
expecting uh, some separation from some senior firefighters maybe this spring. Uh, that's not guaranteed. Uh, we also have part-time firefighters that work with us uh, for our union contract. We do have uh, part-time firefighters right now. You all are 24 hours? Yes, sir. How long have you been with us now? 22 years. Okay. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Tell the chief I said hello. Absolutely. All right. Councilman <laughs> Baker. Excellent job. Well, thank you guys for all you do. Thank you for coming out this evening. Okay. And uh, make a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to the meeting for the health and safety committee. I'll be adjourned. Motion to May. Second. I second it. Second. Paul Rowe. Councilor Martin? Yay. Councilor Baker? Yay. Councilor Wheeler? Yay. Down six twenty three.